This is the quad loaded up with two lithium ion batteries and it comes out to an all up weight of 648.5 grams. The dry weight of the quad is about 330 grams. That makes the batteries 318.4 grams. And just for reference, this is the battery that I usually fly with, a 2200 milliamp hour 3S battery. It weighs 173.9 grams. The batteries I'm using are lithium ion cells in the 18650 form factor and it is specifically the moly cell P26A which has a 2600 milliamp hour capacity and a maximum discharge current of 35 amps. So in my 3S2P configuration that would give me 5200 milliamp hours and a 70 amp discharge current which is more than enough for cruising around efficiently and trying to get a long flight time. I soldered these packs together. Technically you're not supposed to do that, but you can do it pretty safely if you don't have a spot welder. You just can't hold the soldering iron to the batteries for too long before they heat up. So first I sanded the tops and the bottoms of the battery to get rid of an oxide layer. I tinned the top and bottom and added nickel strips to connect batteries in parallel, in pairs and then I added more nickel strips to connect the batteries in series and finally added the XT60 connector and a balance lead for charging. I also put some foam on the end caps before wrapping it up with electrical tape to hold it together. So that was the build process for this battery. In the next flight I'll run it along with the batteries from the previous flight in a 3S3P configuration and I'll add another for a 3S4P configuration and they'll be connected with these two XT60 parallel connectors. The quadcopter runs 2306 2700 kV motors um, except for this one in the back which is a 2400 kV motor. I lost it in a crash so I is replaced it with what I had lying around and it doesn't seem to impact flight performance that negatively. I can see in the black box logs it maxes out on full throttle punches, but it doesn't, it's not really noticeable in flight, which is a good thing. So I don't have to get a, another 2700 kV motor, which happened to be out of stock. The camera is the Runcam Eagle 2 Pro, which is an older camera, one that I had from a flying FPV with planes, but it's able to fit in here with the curved top plate, which I can do because I 3D printed the frame, and it has a really nice image quality. I think the sensor they use is discontinued, so I got pretty lucky picking up that. The flight controller is the iFlight F4 stack with the 35 amp 4-in-1 ESC, and it has a Race Day Quads Mach 3 VTX in the back. On top here is just uh, these rails, a Runcam 2 4K can sit nicely here and I'll just run a Velcro strap up and around.
quadcopter with a 3S3P configuration comes in at 795.4 grams. With the 3S4P configuration, it has an all-up weight of 960 grams. I also did a test with the 3S1P configuration and got almost 17 minutes of flight time. This test was done in a smaller area though, so I probably wasn't going as fast, which may have inflated the flight time compared to the other results. The graph clearly shows the diminishing returns when adding more battery, and it seems like if I added any more I would actually get less flight time. I think the most useful configurations to me are the 3S1P and 3S2P because the heavier configurations made the quad much less locked in and responsive to the sticks for not as much benefit to flight time. At the end of each flight, the milliamp hours put back into the pack by the battery charger was recorded, and I constantly got around 87-88% to 88 of the actual capacity. For each of the tests, I landed at around 8.5 volts because that's when I could really feel the voltage falling off the cliff at the end of the charge. The pack still has some milliamp hours left to give after it has recovered, but I feel like I got most of the actual usable energy from them while under realistic flight conditions. Thanks for watching, bye.